be seated. Simeon described the Lord as a sign of contradiction, a sign that will be contradicted. It was a declaration of what happened at his birth. It was a declaration of what will happen in his adult life. At his birth, he brought joy to the shepherds, but he brought trouble to Herod. At his birth, people from afar came to adore him. At his birth, some who were nearby ran away from him. He would be a sign of contradiction, according to Simeon. He will be called child of Bilsibul, and yet called son of David. They will say, Hosanna, as he entered Jerusalem. They will also say, crucify him later on. They are going to say, he is a very good teacher, but they are also going to say, what kind of teacher is this who eats with sinners and tax collectors? He will be a sign of contradiction. Some will consider him crazy. Some will consider him wise. He will be a sign of contradiction because even his friend Lazarus will die without his presence. And yet, he will be in the lives of so many people consoling them in their agony. He will be a sign of contradiction because he always said, May your will be done, Heavenly Father. And yet, at the Garden of Gethsemane, he will say, Father, let this chalice pass me by. He was a sign of contradiction. He was a sign of opposites. He was a sign, according to Simeon, that will be contradicted. A disciple cannot expect to be less. If the Lord was contradicted, a disciple cannot expect to be popular. If the Lord was a sign that will be contradicted, the disciple of the Lord cannot expect to receive applause all the time. And as we remember Pope Benedict XVI in this Mass, we also say he was a sign of contradiction for our times. Pope Benedict had finally closed his eyes to the world, but eventually opened his eyes to paradise. He was a sign of contradiction because almost nine years ago, he said, my health is too feeble, I cannot continue as Pope anymore. But he reached 95. Isn't that a contradiction? He said he was too sick to continue as Pope. But he himself said, I was not expecting I would live this long. He was called God's Rottweiler. He was called Dr. No as a theologian. He was called Dr. No as Archbishop of Freising and Munich. And yet, when he became Prefect of the Doctrine of Faith, he was known for his affirmative orthodoxy. My dear seminarians, in case affirmative orthodoxy is too heavy for you, what it means is this, that we don't have to be united in the faith simply by correcting error. That unity in the faith is not always a reaction to heresy because faith unites and faith is affirmatively proclaimed. That is why Pope Benedict was loved by some and hated by some. Some considered him conservative, some considered him too progressive, some considered him too weak, some considered him too strong. Just in case you have forgotten, when the clerical sexual abuse erupted in many parts of the world, we owe it to Pope Benedict that he instituted the system, the institution, 
he instituted the reform in the church in order to correct this wound, this scourge in the church. In other words, brothers and sisters, as the Lord was a sign of contradiction, Pope Benedict of Happy Memory was also a sign of contradiction. And if, was, if, if he was called His Holiness, it was because faith makes us holy and faithfulness makes us holier. We all have received the faith, but not all of us can be faithful to the faith that we have received. Courage in proclaiming the faith, constancy in living that faith. My dear brothers and sisters, for the next few days, people will praise Him. The critics might be charitable and keep quiet. But in my heart of hearts, I know that we have a new Pope Saint in heaven. On a personal note, he sent me as Archbishop of Lingay and the Gupan. And the signature of his letter to me will remain very precious for me. On a very personal note, he gave me a pectoral cross as a bishop, as a delegate in the Synod, and for all practical purposes, I now have a relic of him. But beyond the gifts, beyond the signature, beyond the photographs, it is the memory of a holy man that I will relish in my heart. Well, if I may do a little boasting, not all of us have met Pope Benedict. I have met him many times, and I can tell you, it is impossible, it is impossible not to feel the holiness of God once you have encountered him. There is a holiness that exudes from his face, from his body, from his speech that is mysterious, that, is, that cannot be understood. I know, in his, I know in my heart, in my heart of hearts, that he loved God and God loved him tenderly. And it is no wonder that at his last breath, according to his secretary, his final words were, Jesus, I love you. It was the way to conclude a life of love for the Lord. He loved Jesus all the way, contradicted, maligned, criticized, threatened. He remained faithful because he knew in his heart his servant is the Lord. He was not a servant of popularity. He was not a servant of prestige and power. He was only, in his own words, a feeble, weak worker in the vineyard of the Lord. Pope Benedict XVI, pray for us.